Man City, obviously, it came out this week about the 115 charges case is going to start in September. What do you think the likely time frame for a conclusion of that case will be? Uh, well, look, look, if it if it really is um, September, and obviously we're only working on uh, one article, a uh, couple of articles, uh, um, from what I hear, none of the parties are speaking. So uh, it's still unclear where, where this uh, leak has come from. Uh, I think it's disappointing, first of all, that Premier League don't simply, uh, and, and City themselves, together, the parties should just agree to disclose the timings um, publicly. I don't, I don't see that that would prejudice anything. And I think it would remove some of that doubt from the from the outside world. Uh, but let's assume that's not going to happen uh, and that the story is true and it starts, let's say, in September and it runs for 10 weeks. Now, if it does run for 10 weeks, you're effectively saying that's most of this year, um, what's, what's left of the year. And um, I think that would mean, first of all, it would be a very long hearing. Uh, it, it's not typical to have 10 week hearings, even in complex civil and commercial cases. So you can expect the vast majority of that to be taken up by witness evidence and witness cross-examination um, and expert uh, e expert evidence as well. Um, and what that means is that that will create a huge amount of um, complexity and uh, evidence for the panel to uh, consider. And I would think that will not be uh, something that they will be able to do uh, particularly quickly. Um, simply because of the volume of information that they're going to be um, asked to consider and documents that they will be referred to and the position set out by uh, both parties. So uh, ordinarily in a case like this, if it was in the courts, uh, you would expect a judgment to take many months after the hearing, um, possibly even a year. Uh, or, or I mean, it can be even longer for, for, for a 10-week trial, but, but, but it could easily take a year to hear the decision. Um, what we don't know here is whether they have effectively not only booked out the panel's time for the whole of the rest of the year for the hearing, but whether they've also booked out the panel for the first part of 2025 for them to consider and then write up their written reasons. So at the moment, we don't know about timescales, but, but the idea that it would be very early in 2025, if it is a 10-week trial, I think is unlikely. So I think we can you can expect that they will need something like at least the same again to write up the decision. So if it, if it really is a 10 week hearing, uh, I can't see that they're going to be able to deliver it any time before March. Mm. I saw that they were hopeful the conclusion would be reached before the end of the season. Mm. You see that being the case. I mean, it's complicated, isn't it? If, if a judgment is given, with the Premier League to actually the, the, an action to be given during the season. It's difficult, isn't it? Well, it's very complicated, first of all, especially because there's inevitably going to be an appeal if City lose. I mean, if the Premier League lose, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And obviously, we need to wait and see what the decision itself says in terms of the outcome. That will then dictate whether people think that they have a good or a, uh, a viable case for appeal. It may be that the way that the decision is written makes that very difficult. But if you look at what happened say with the Everton appeal, what Everton effectively did when they got the 10 points is they took the decision, which was, I think, you know, let's say 60 pages long. They hired a new barrister, the best, pretty much the best commercial barrister in the country um, in uh, Lawrence Rabinovich, KC, and effectively asked him to spend five days attacking every point that he could. And, um, and uh, you know, that, if if let's say we have a 200 page judgment uh in the city case and it could be even be more um that process is going to take some time and the process around it is going to take some time so i think it's unlikely that if let's say the decision comes out in march that they can somehow get an appeal uh, processed uh heard and decided all by the end of the season i just don't think that that is in any way realistic um, unless the parties specifically agree to some kind of expedited process. But, you know, that certainly won't be happening now because nobody can prejudge what, what 
how it's going to pan out. So I don't think, as we sit here now, that the that they will have set up a timetable that goes all the way through in terms of appeal and everything else. And I, I just think it's unlikely that um, something so complicated, and I, I assume that it's 10 weeks, right? If if actually what's happened is loads of things have dropped off and loads of charges have already been dropped and and have already been dealt with, and actually we're looking at a much shorter hearing, then of course everything changes. But taking it all at face value from what we've seen in the in the times in particular that this is a 10 week trial that's going to run to the end of the year and therefore has an incredible level of complexity that we always thought it had this is just not going to be dealt with i don't think to conclusion after appeal um before the end of 2025 rather than the end of the 24 25 season in my opinion i i just don't i just can't see it i mean i guess it's gone on since the initial charges were handed out beginning of last year so it's such an extensive period of time that's gone on it, it, it they're not going to rush it out there and i guess it's not in man city's interest yeah. to maybe expedite it well i don't i don't think it's in anybody's interest to rush it you know so the idea is that city are delaying everything but but i think it's more likely that both parties want to make sure that there aren't easy ways that the other side can appeal and that means doing things properly and giving you know for example the panel proper time to write up the the decision because what we see and what we saw actually in the Everton case in terms of the, the the major part of the appeal is because the Everton first judgment didn't give a level of detail as to how they'd come up with um, their their reasoning on the bad faith charge because it, it just kind of dropped it in and and sort of there was an assessment that um that that nobody had asked for it and on top of that in terms of how they came up with the 10 points and what other factors they considered because those things weren't properly dealt with in the uh, judgment uh, of the original 10 point everton fine that gave everton a good chance to to challenge um some of those things that appeal to the point where they got the four points off and um it's those sorts of mistakes in the decision that both parties are going to want to avoid. Uh, and obviously, obviously the panel doesn't want to be appealed either. So I just don't think anybody's going to want to rush it, as you say. I, I just think that's unlikely, you know, especially because we've gone so far. It's taken so long to get to this point. The idea that you would then rush all, of, you know, everything else, I think it, it just seems unlikely to me. But, you know, we'll see. It, I mean, we'll, I'll say we'll see, but of course, everything's private and confidential. So all we'll see is some leaks out of the process. I just think it's disappointing that the Premier League and uh, City together haven't, and the panel clearly as the key decision maker, but that everybody hasn't said, look, the one thing that we can do is give people visibility on the timetable, but they, they've chosen not to do that. So we are where we are. Yeah, and it just rumbles on, but... Yeah, like I say, here we are. Um, also, the Times reported that Premier League clubs could sue Manchester City for compensation. Is that actually possible within the rules? Well, it's not suing. Um, it's So the Premier League clubs all agree only to arbitrate disputes between themselves, which is effectively private, private hearings of the type that they're going through with the uh, associated party transactions. And uh, likewise, uh, under the FA rules, all parties agree only to arbitration. And so uh, this won't be suing in the courts. Um, uh, uh, and there won't even be the possibility for appeal to the court for arbitration for sports. So there's very limited uh, ways in which uh, clubs can take action against each other. In this case, uh, it is likely, I would think, that um, under the rules within uh, the rules that, that, that are prosecuting City. So uh, rule W of the Premier League rules uh, has one of the sub rules there is 51.5, which gives the independent commission itself, the one that hears the City case, gives that commission the power to award unlimited compensation to any other parties. So in the uh, Everton case, we discovered that a number of clubs had gone to that independent commission 
they tried to get involved in the in the hearing as third parties that was rejected but but we did see that they had said that effectively they wanted uh, compensation under rule 51.5 and you would think that it's likely uh, that if there were findings against city that that the the clubs uh, would want to explore routes in which they could um, indeed get compensation out of either the independent commission themselves or at a follow-on arbitration down the line uh, in the way that uh, the famous case of West Ham, uh, Sheffield United versus West Ham, uh, ended up with uh, Sheffield United paying West Ham £20 million in an out-of-court settlement. Um, so, uh, you know, that sort of that sort of settlement is not uh, it, it is not impossible, but it's going to be very complicated. I mean, if, the, if there are findings against City and other clubs express a desire to seek compensation, that process in itself is going to be extraordinarily complex and time-consuming. And uh, at the moment, we've really got no colour on how that might work.